All right, welcome to episode, I think it's 15, and uh, the uh, Cam Studio is much better behaved on this machine, and so that makes me happy, and therefore we can do our next episode. So this episode is one where we're going to take the player ship, and we're actually going to make it so that we can transition into that battle stage that, you, that we created a little while ago. Uh, and the battle stage will be generated by whatever star we happen to visit, and it'll just be the, the very simple... Uh, very basic idea uh, that we, we're going to uh, want to be able to transition to uh, between stages. So we're going to set up the framework of a persistent set of objects. And the primary persistent object that we're going to be using is the player ship itself. Uh, and to that end, we're actually going to uh, have to... There's a lot of things we could do here. Um, but none of these controls are actually specific to the player. Now the player does end up using the ship control and the ship nav control, um, but it could just as easily be that the player is in control of an NPC ship. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a new class, which we'll call persistent object. Now this persistent object class is not quite as generic as it sounds. Um, Basically, what this does is it's going to be a shortcut to allow us to create a variety of persistent objects. Uh, the primary one will be this particular player ship, but later on we will descend from the same class and create persistent objects for stars that you've modified. Uh, so here in start, we just say, don't destroy unload, unload uh, game object. And what that means is that it won't destroy it on load. So when we transition to a new scene, uh, this ship will remain in the scene. Um, oops, go back up there. Uh, however, we're actually going to go ahead and descend from it already with a persistent player, persistent player ship. Open that up. And instead of dis descending from mono behavior, we're going to descend from persistent object, as you might expect. And here in persistent object, um, uh, we can close that down because uh, the, pers the, per the persistent player ship has a couple of things to it that it needs to do when we transition. So over here on player ship, we're going to go ahead and change this persistent object script to a persistent player ship script. Should do the same thing. But the persistent player ship will need to do things like grab the new camera for the new uh, uh, for the new scene and a couple of other things. So what do we do? We actually need to make it so that the ship can transition into the new scene. And the way we do that is over here in oh, it's not open. Let's go ahead and open it over here in ship nav control. Uh, we, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that uh, uh, if we are within 0.1, instead of setting throttle equal to 0, uh, well, yes, we actually do need to set throttle equals to 0 as well. But we also need to transition over into the new scene. So uh, how do we do that? That's actually pretty easy. You just do... Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head because it's been a long time. Um, hold on, I'll just look it up. It's really easy. Uh, yes, uh, application starts with an A, not with an E. I was thinking of, like, executable or something. I don't know. Low level. Garden. Like so. Let's go back over into Unity here, make sure that our level is, in fact, named Garden. Yep. Uh, and when we hit play... It's, uh, garden couldn't be loaded because it wasn't added to the build settings. Because we should actually instantly teleport into the first star, so you shouldn't even see that screen. Uh, but as it turns out, we need to change the build settings so that it includes both uh, garden and navi. Uh, and that's just something that, that uh, is obvious, and I just forgot about it for a second there. So here we are, we're in the, uh, the combat view, as you might remember. But you notice that um, we have the player ship that is not the one we were originally using. Uh, this is not the same player ship that was here, and we can see that 
by going back out into... I think that we're actually back out into Navi right now. Yeah, we are. Uh, cancel. So, we'll change this named player ship to uh, persistent ship, just so that we can see whether or not it is persisting correctly. Uh, oh, and also over here in... this is getting a little bit annoying, so uh, here in ship controls just to get rid of that stupid error down there. There we are. Alright, so now we're in here, but you can see that this is player ship, not persistent player ship. Uh, so the question is, why didn't this ship persist? And the answer is that this actually overrides the parent call. Uh, when you when you have this start, there's no... Uh, uh, it actually does not call the base start. So in order to deal with that, I think that the terminology is that. No, that's not it. Is it that? Hold on, let me look it up. Syntax differs from place to place. Uh, so, hold on. So the syntax I was trying was actually for the initializer, and we're not actually in the initializer. It's We're actually here in a subsequent... Um, section, but I'm not sure whether or not it's going to let us do this. Um, come on, you. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Now, there's got to be a way to do this, and I'm just not remembering it right. Alright, so that was a two-part uh, fix. I needed to go into the persistent object, and I needed to tell it that the void start is actually a public virtual. Um, I, by, I think what was in my head was, was kind of screwy. Uh, so this defines that class as a public virtual, which can then be overridden, and you can just call base.start. Uh, that's basic C-sharp stuff, um, which I had forgotten and was blanking on. So now you can see that we have a persistent ship and a player ship, and that's because we actually have uh, uh, the, the persistent ship and the player ship. Uh, the player ship is already in that particular area, and we need to uh, delete it. Goodbye. So now we have the persistent ship, but oh, well, I have to go back into the correct garden area. Oh, no, Navi. There we are. So now we have the persistent ship, but you may have noticed it's not on the screen. Persistent ship is currently located at uh, 82 by 49, and that's because uh, it is at the location where the star was. So what we need to do when we transition across these new uh, into a new area is we need to actually make it so that it zeroes it out, puts it in the right spot, uh, and a couple of other things like that. So here we are in ship nav control, and here we load the level. We're going to go ahead and abstract that out. And we'll name it something flavorful, like drop out of warp. Like that. So we need to load the level, and then we need to do a whole bunch of other stuff. For example, transform.position equals vector3.0, which will put us right smack dab in the middle. And then we need to do uh, camera.main, or uh, we need to do... Uh, uh, Ship, uh, oh, uh, uh, ship controls sc equals get component ship controls. If sc equals null, yeah, that's what sc is. If sc equals null, then debug.error uh, cannot find ship controls. Return sc dot. Uh, sorry, because I've got this camera dot main floating down there, uh, it doesn't understand what the heck's going on and has decided that it's not going to calculate anything. And so let's hope that that works. Uh, so while wow, Cam Studio works great on this new machine, Mono still sucks. Some things never change. There we go. Uh, and that should actually switch us out, but we need to turn off our nav system here. 
And we're going to do that by adding in a new variable called public bool navigating equals true. And then down here we'll say navigating equals false. And then we hit play. And there we go. We now have the persistent ship as our main player ship. But uh, something went wrong along the way um, because we are not actually, we didn't actually uh, uh, gr grab that main camera. And I'm pretty sure the problem is that we initialized the main camera um, too rapidly. Uh, rather, we, we, we called this load level, but then I think when we actually went to uh, fix the main camera to our ship like this, um, I think that we ended up affixing the main camera from the star map view, and we're going to fix that by calling this star map camera. And we'll just go ahead and see whether or not that is the camera that is the main camera at the time. We can call this debug.log camera.main.name. And when we hit play, we'll see star map camera. So uh, when we call load level, it's actually asynchronous. As far as I know, it doesn't put this on pause and then come back to it. So rather than actually assigning it, what we have to do is we have to set up uh, the the ship controls to regain control. And we're going to do that by saying public bool needs control. And over here, we're going to say, uh, and the reason we're doing this via this method rather than, uh, hold on, there might be a faster way to do this. Yeah, there's a better way to do this. I'm, I'm kind of beating around the bush when I don't need to. Uh, I'm working around something that that exists. I don't. I'm going to re-implement something and that would just be stupid. So we actually call this load level, but then the problem is that we uh, don't have any way to load up the ship. But in actuality, we have some, plenty of great ways to do that. So here in uh, ship controls, we can just add a new function. Um, hold on, let me switch over to C sharp here. For some reason, they default to. JavaScript and all of their demos because everyone knows that's the better language. Um, so void oh, capital O. So right now uh, the level that we're using is actually level one for the combat level. Um, we may have to fix this later up to be some kind of declared uh, uh, you know static value, but for now we'll just say if level does not equal one, return. Otherwise, uh, uh, ship cam equals camera dot main uh, and debug dot log uh, ship switching to manual control claiming camera. Let's go ahead and see whether or not that works. Windows 8 has very sticky bars; so it wants to resize all the time. All right, so it worked fine. Now, uh, you may think that this is a little bit weird because of the fact that uh, basically we've just spent a whole episode getting it back to the same thing it was before. Zoop. Very satisfying. But this is going to serve as the baseline for our gameplay. We're going to have all of these systems where we keep switching between scenes, and we've got a couple of persistent objects, some of which will be data objects. Um, and it's going to allow us to do a whole bunch of universes that really work well across the scene barrier. And tra crossing the scene barrier is always the hard part in a Unity object, in a Unity game. Uh, and so many uh, generative games have a huge problem with crossing that barrier. This will allow us to do that. It will also allow us to easily save those objects. Uh, so persistent object is currently. Uh, 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 what we're going to do is we're going to end up making that persistent object able to save and load and then we're going to use anything that has that class attached to it as a save load hook but that's way in the future